Hey, it's Jared. Welcome back to my tech channel. In this video, we're going to build our own solid state drive. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, if you buy solid state drives, which I have a lot of these drives like this SanDisk Extreme Pro 2 terabyte drive, very fast, great little drive, and I've used these for a lot of years. However, they are not expandable. This drive is always going to be two terabytes and I'm never going to be able to change it. And I have a lot of older drives that are smaller, like 500 gig and stuff like that that I just don't use anymore because I can't fit as much content on them. And I use drives like this to edit video and photo from, to use as temporary storage when I'm not ready to move files over to my server yet, and also just to expand the storage memory on my computer when I have a lot of stuff on there and it's getting a little bit full and I need a little bit of extra space. So the reason you would want to build one is because you can expand that without having to start over again. You simply buy an enclosure like this Asus Tough Gaming enclosure. There are lots of different enclosures. This one's uh, maybe a little bit rugged looking, but there are all sorts of different enclosures out there and we'll talk about which one you should buy. And then you can buy a solid state drive, which I have a two terabyte Hynix Platinum solid state drive here, which uh, is the same as this SanDisk, but I can actually expand this. There's solid state drives, four terabytes, and as they continue to improve with the technology, we'll have eight terabytes and 12 terabytes. We'll have much larger solid state drives as we move forward. And so if you find yourself needing to expand the storage, you're not necessarily gonna have to start over and buy a whole new unit. That's where the benefits of something like this come from. So I'm gonna open up the solid state drive and we're gonna look at that. And we're also going to look at the enclosure and we will put this together and test it. I've done this with several drives, also with an Asus enclosure, a different one, and I find this to be the best option as far as performance goes. I think longevity too, because this type of drive, this SSD, these are designed to go inside of computers and deal with constant load that computers typically are under. This would go in a PC, and in that PC, it could be on all day, all night, running, playing games from it, loading software, running the operating system, doing everything from this type of drive. The memory that is inside of these drives is not designed to be taxed that heavily. So I find that I'm gonna get better lifespan out of something like an SSD as well. Considering the cost of these types of devices, I'm actually saving money by building my own drive here. All right, so inside the Asus box, you can see we have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 SSD enclosure. That's what you're gonna want right now because that is the best and fastest transfer protocols that are available. So let's go ahead and pull out the enclosure and then we have a cable down below and a small tool. The enclosure is somewhat important because you need an enclosure that has enough metal or enough density to dissipate the heat of the SSD. These SSDs do produce a bit of heat. And so with that heat, you want that heat to be able to go somewhere and you want that heat to be able to go into the body of the enclosure. So that way it is not staying within the drive itself, which is going to shorten its lifespan. So let's open up this enclosure. It's got four screws on the back. I like the design. It does look rugged. I feel like if I dropped this, if this thing got banged around in my bag, it's not going to be a problem. I'm not going to worry about this type of SSD. You can see this one right here has scuffs and scratches and stuff all over it. It's just been in my backpack. I haven't treated that thing too roughly at all. And so if I found myself being on site doing a lot of work where I might be outdoors or I might be sliding this uh, SSD around a lot or passing it off to other people because I'm working with other people, perhaps my uh, video content is going on this and I'm giving it to a video editor and I don't know how they're going to treat my equipment. I may want something that's a little bit more durable. And you could buy SSDs like this that are pre-built and everything that are more tough. But once again, you're not going to be able to take it apart and build it out and upgrade it like you can with this device. So this enclosure accepts several different types of SSDs. This SSD right here is the common type that you would have inside of a computer. It's an NVMe. 
you can see it pretty much spans the entire length of this enclosure. But there are different types of NVMe drives and this accepts the majority of them. So simply here, all you need to do is slot the NVMe. You just wanna slot it in there a bit. You don't wanna push too hard. You can see it just kind of snapped into place there. And right now it's kind of sitting at an angle. Now we will rotate this down and there's a little knob here on the back and we just wanna make sure that it is straight up and down so that the NVMe slides right in there just like so. And then we're going to twist with our thumbnail. I'm using my thumbnail here just to twist this around so that it locks the NVMe into place. And I could actually use the little tool here, just really gently press on that a little bit just to make sure that it is seated up against that. But I don't wanna accidentally scratch or nick the SSD. So that is really all we need to do. You can see here on the backside, there is some thermal tape here and it has already been peeled off, it's already sticky. It's ready to seat on the NVMe and help with the dissipation of heat. So now all I have to do is just put the backing back on the enclosure and put the screws back in. So we'll get the screws in there. Now, this is built really well. I have had NVMe enclosures that are not built as tough as this particular enclosure. What you wanna be careful with some of the cheaper enclosures is not to over tighten these screws. On this cheaper enclosures, these screws can strip out rather easily. And so you definitely wanna be careful when putting these screws in on the NVMe. And even on this one, you don't wanna over tighten them. I'm just getting them finger tight right now. And then I'll take the wrench here and I will tighten them a bit more, but not over tightening them at all. This particular enclosure is also IP68 water resistant, which is great. You might've seen the O-ring that was on this seal. That's what's really good about this particular enclosure is that this one's good for all weather. A lot of these other ones are sealed as well. I don't believe this one's IP68, but it is uh, water resistant to some extent. If you find yourself in those type of scenarios, you definitely wanna make sure that all the hardware that is exposed to the elements is going to have some sort of protection. All right, so now we're ready to test this out. We simply just plug in the cable into the base and then we plug the cable into the computer. So let's go and test it and we'll be right back with the results. All right, so the testing was great. This Hynix drive inside of this enclosure produces great results and I'm showing you those on screen now. There are two different tests that I ran. One is the Blackmagic disk test, which tests the reading and writing speed for most formats of video, but the amorphous disk test is a great test to run on something like this, which is more about the actual drive inside of it than it is the enclosure. The reason that I like that test is because it really challenges the drive that's inside. Now, when I am running that test on these types of drives, these drives are great for copying files over to them. And yeah, you can edit video and do stuff like that off of these drives, but the random writing and reading of different locations of data on these drives really starts to suffer just because of the memory type. When you connect an SSD drive like this to your computer, you essentially are adding a second hard drive to your computer. This drive is designed to be written to and read from in all different ways, which is typical to a normal operation of a computer system. So if you've got files and folders and different things going on on this drive, and then you connect it for some video editing or some photo editing or anything like that, or even just as a general backup drive, the read and write speeds are gonna be consistently faster with this drive. Running a simple speed test will show you how fast it can read and write for a, a very short period of time. But as the drive takes in more data and has to write it and put it in places and store it, then that's when things start to slow down. So with an SSD drive like this, you're gonna see more consistent speeds as you continue to use it throughout the day, throughout all of the work that you're doing that typically would tax an external drive like this. These are really great for moving files from one place to the other. These are really good for doing work and also utilizing the additional storage that you get by having larger capacity drives that you can connect to your computer over something as simple as USB-C. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Check out the links in the description to this enclosure. I've also got another enclosure in there that I've tested in the past that was really good and a couple of different SSD drive options that you can choose from between the Hynix and another Samsung drive that I typically use pretty often as well. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you back in another one.